Hiya, welcome to Tallulah Lagash. This is not a full wild vlog video because I've already made one of those with my last two dreams. The video ended really hurriedly because I was going to run out of filming space. My mobile phone for some reason can only record um, about 33 minutes of footage if I'm using the front camera. Um, the back camera, sorry, and therefore I had to just really, really speedily get the end bit of the dream described in very fleeting detail. As I always say, if you do want to see the full dream record in the most detail it will ever be um, recorded, that is in written form on my blog, Viva Lagash, which is linked in the description box below. What I really neglected to do was not so much cover the specific dreams I was discussing in enough detail for the wild vlog. I think I managed to do that. What I did forget to do was to include the little mini dream incubation challenge. So the specific character event, object, something themed around or related to Star Wars, which I've used to boost my current dream incubation experiment, a Star Wars adventure version two, linked in the description box below. So each night or on a 24 hour cycle, so every day essentially planning for the night ahead and any naps that I might have during daytime hours, I um, will set the additional challenge of having that extra, um, very specifically chosen Star Wars um, element, see if that does pop up in my dreams at all, or whether um, there's anything that could be connected or linked to it even, perhaps a little bit tenuously. I, for example, did one where my specific Star Wars cue or trigger for the mini dream incubation was um, kyber crystals and the night relevant to that particular challenge I had a dream about a jeweler's shop where AJ and I were looking at sort of plum sized maybe my fist sized um, gemstones in a glass display, display case and we needed to obtain a cream coloured ruby because AJ wanted to enter it or use it somehow in a yoghurt competition or yoghurt contest. So I think that that does link to Kyber crystals somewhat, even if a little bit tenuously, because I imagine a Kyber crystal to look like a gemstone, rightly or wrongly. When I get round to updating my blog with that particular dream, I will um, include an image of a kyber crystal, which I'll find online somewhere. Anyway, the specific cue or trigger, which I'm going to be using for the mini Star Wars dream incubation within the framework of the broader overarching main Star Wars adventure dream incubation theme is going to be okay i'm going to justify it before i tell you what it is because i think you know mitigate the fact that i'm repeating an aspect of an earlier one that i did only a few days ago but also um that it's a very cheesy star wars scene that i don't think ranks on most people's favorite scene from star wars list i'm going to choose one that I think is going to be relatively easy because I've had a number of um, recent dream experiences where this theme was either specifically present or was based on a real waking life experience that I've had which directly relates to the same concept. So it's either something that's appeared in a dream or has been linked to today residue of this actually happen, happening in my waking everyday reality. So 
that is why I think I may have chance or prospect of um, implanting the seed for this particular theme. It is something which has appeared in Star Wars, it is intrinsic to the plot of Star Wars, I guess. Well, I think it is pretty intrinsic overall to the plot, even if the scene wasn't um, particularly significant within the actual movie. I am choosing the wedding, the marriage of Anakin Skywalker and Padme Amidala, which takes place in episode two, Attack of the Clones. So it doesn't have to be that specific scene, it's the concept of Anakin's marriage to Padme. And I think I may have an additional um, hope of having this particular Star Wars related um, idea pop up in a dream. Another reason for that is the fact that AJ and I have always, or well, since he's watched the Star Wars movies in fairly recent times, but since he's watched those movies, we've always discussed the fact that we want to have a Star Wars themed wedding. He said it as a concession to me because he loves me so much, he just wants to make me happy. But I genuinely think that if it's done not, you know, so that everybody has to cosplay, but it's done more subtly so that um, basically it has a little bit of class and sophistication to it, um, I think it would be something that he would immensely enjoy it because it would just be very fun and there's some good costume ideas. I had mentioned that I found a wedding dress which looked very similar to a Star Wars themed kind of um, outfit. I think it was just a very generic Star Wars aesthetic rather than being a specific character's costume. But I had mentioned to him that I'd found one of those. We discussed about having a blue and a pink lightsaber and a cake that was shaped like the Death Star. We'd said that if we had a baby when we get married, that could be dressed up like Yoda, even more so now that we have the child or baby Yoda as seen in The Mandalorian. So we've discussed the concept of Star Wars weddings with him playing Anakin and me playing Padme. He always asks me if I'm going to be Leia, as does everybody else, but that would be Anakin marrying his future daughter which may not be that odd for Star Wars considering, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't think that it was necessary to tell Luke and Leia that they were twins when they were about to get it on, potentially making a very big mistake. Force ghosts, clearly not as useful um, because he could have done this as a human being, but he also could have done it as a force ghost and then just disappeared and not had to deal with the consequences. So. Yeah, that's why I think that would be a perfect um, little cue or trigger for my mini dream incubation within the Star Wars adventure dream incubation experiment. I will obviously update you um, tomorrow if I've had a dream that I can recall or within the next few days at least and then post this video sometime way into the future because I'm a little bit disorganised with my uploads, having to do so many all in one go. I am balancing a lot of things at the moment, so work, my PhD study and other life events as well as, you know, doing my content creation and getting everything uploaded um, in a timely manner. And all my blog posts take an inordinate amount of time because though I'm a fairly fast typer, I am quite um, regimented and rigid with how I post my content online so even if there is so much as a double space where there should be a single space or one of my images doesn't quite line up that would be enough for me to sit for hours trying to figure out what's gone wrong with the formatting so yeah sorry that these are often filmed in the past and these dates have long gone by the time that you watch these videos. I don't think the dates specifically matter, that's the thing. They only really matter in terms of discussing current events which influence my dreams as and when they happen. But if you're just here to see how my dreams work and specifically 
whether I am successful in the dream incubation experiment and more generally how my waking everyday reality affects my dream content in the way that I discuss it in these videos. You can do that without it needing to be necessarily contemporaneous. It doesn't actually need to be something that you're watching the day after it takes place for you to just get the concept and hopefully enjoy it. Okay, I'm going to end here because I'm about to go into a very, very public area. I'm going to go up to the shop and buy something to eat for dinner. That's the shop there. So I am really out live in public at the moment. But thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, thumbs up, share, drop me a comment, check out the description box. Thanks so much for watching. See you on my next one. Bye.